Elaine and Elaine and Wimbledon. It's great to see you in the building and to those who are watching online, welcome to you as well. Let's all stand to our feet this morning. And let's just begin just to focus our gaze on Jesus this morning. If you can pray in tongues, pray in tongues. If not, just pray in English. But just focus your gaze on this morning and everything that he has done for you. Oh, Lord God, we just welcome you in this place this morning. Lord Jesus, it is all about you. We just lay everything else down this morning. We just thank you, Lord, that we can come together and we in freedom can worship you and everything that you have done for us. We just glorify your name. We just praise you, Lord Jesus, who are on the throne. We just thank you for everything that you have done for us. Lord, we just thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your death on the cross. We thank you, Lord, for our deliverance. We thank you for our freedom. We thank you for our healing. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you continue to do in our lives today. And Lord, we just thank you, we glorify you, we praise you for everything that you have done for us. Shabadakia, ma kabadakiesh. Shamadakia, badakiesh. Shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Ma shabadakia, shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Shamadakia, shabadakia. Ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia. We just welcome your presence, Lord Jesus. Shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Holy Spirit, just come. We welcome you in this place this morning. And Lord Jesus, we say, have your way. Have your way in this place this morning. It's about you. It's not about our agenda. It's not about our ambition. It's not about us at all, what we want. But Lord, we just focus our gaze on you. And we say, Lord Jesus, have your way. Holy Spirit, come this morning. Holy Spirit, soften our hearts this morning to hear your word, to hear your voice. Meet with us this morning. We want to be intimate with you today. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma kabadakia, shabadakia, shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Shabadakia, ma kabadakia, shabadakia. Ma kabadakia, shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Ma shabadakia, ma kabadakia. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for everything that you're going to do. We just glorify your name and we just give you this next few hours, Lord. We just say, we focus on you and have your way. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our hearts this morning. Speak to us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Lord, let your glory fall in this place today. As you have done throughout all ages, forever the same, from Solomon's temple, to the upper room, to Cornelius' house, to this house. Lord, let your glory fill this place. Lord, get yourself glory here. We bless your holy name. There is no other name but Jesus. Jesus, we bless you.
omnipotent. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. He is radiant. He is radiant. Oh my.
counselor. He's counselor. He's mighty God. He is mighty God. He's Prince of Peace. He's the Prince of Peace. The Omnipotent. The Omnipotent. He is wonderful. He is wonderful. He is radiant. He is radiant. The Almighty. Jesus. Jesus. We thank you for your presence in the room, Lord. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your presence. We honor you. We cry out, we worship, we adore. We reverence you. Father, make us a people who don't just praise, but make us a people who worship. Make us a people who bow. Make us a people who adore. Take us into the Holy of Holies. Take us into the inner chambers, beyond the veil. God, we pray today beyond the veil. Worshippers, lay down lovers, those who know the intimacy. Not just the shout, but who know intimate moments with you who know the intimacy of the spirit male silame kilamondo ralebendi shilebendi kimando raba sa jesus his name is jesus we celebrate him we honor him we come before him that name that name, that name, that name, the name that encompasses every other name, 
We thank you for it. We honor you, Jesus. I'm going to get you just for a moment. We're not going to fin- we're not finished worshiping, but for a moment I'm going to get you to grab your seats. If we can just hand out communion this morning. If we can just hand that round. Jesus. Yeah, keep the keep those lights off for me. Jesus. I don't know if we've got more welcome team, but if we can get that moving, that would be great for me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're coming into Easter. We're coming into Good Friday, Easter Sunday. We've got coming up an incredible Easter weekend for you. We're going to be doing a big giveaway. We're going to be doing performances. It's going to be something to invite people to this Easter Sunday. Uh, Who can bring a friend? Who says yes to come in and try to find a family member, find someone to get them to the house? But when we look at the cross, there was seven things that Jesus said on the cross. Seven things. Just give me your attention. I know communion's going around, but stay with me. Otherwise, I may as well talk to myself. Seven things Jesus said on the cross. He he said, Telestai, it is finished. He said, into my hands I commit my spirit. Passing himself off to the Father. He, he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He said to John, this is your mother. And to his mother, this is your son. He said, I thirst. But... This morning, I want, as we take communion, as to remember two other things he said on the cross. He said to the thief, he said, today you'll be with me in paradise. And the second and final thing he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. When we... Look at the gospel. This is the message of the gospel. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And today you'll be with me in paradise. You you ask the question, who is them? Who knows? We have to always read scripture in the context of what it was said. And he was talking to those around the cross, but who knows that when he said, Father, forgive them, he was not just talking about the people around the cross. Can we be very clear this morning? The Jews did not kill Jesus. Can we be very clear? The Romans did not kill Jesus. Pontius Pilate did not kill Jesus. Not even the devil killed Jesus. Can I tell you this morning who killed Jesus? You killed Jesus. You killed him. He died for your sins. He laid down his life for those who would believe. He laid down his life, the sacrifice for your sins. And so when he said, Father, forgive them, he was not just saying, Father, forgive those who don't know around this cross. He was saying to everyone who believes, Father, forgive them. I don't know about you, but that gives me a reason to be happy in this house this morning. That I am forgiven, I am forgiven, I am washed, I am clean. And I have the second part of the promise. Today I get to be with him in paradise. Can I tell you, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day we are born again. We don't have to wait till heaven when we die. Heaven can start right now. The kingdom can start right now. Paradise can start right now. Oh, I'm looking for some blood-washed believers in this place today who know that heaven is their home. I'm looking for some people who know the power of the cross and the power of the blood. Oh, if there was five believers in this house who would worship him for the blood this morning. Oh, if there was five people in this house who would celebrate the cross with me this this season. Father, we thank you that we are forgiven. There 
there is a savior. Many people have described the cross as the darkest day in history. I don't think that's right. The darkest day on history, the Son of God dying on the cross. Can I tell you, it was the most glorious day in history. It will be the day that for eternity we will remember. Oh, you see, you're not going to get to heaven and remember your good works. There's not going to be any boasting when you get to heaven. None of you are going to say, well, I pastored a church for 25 years in Wimbledon and I built a church. No boasting. Why? Because none of us get there by our efforts. We get there by the blood of Jesus. We get there by the cross. Oh, oh. This is the good news. I said this is good news. Oh. You will never be good enough to go to heaven. If you're trying to get there by your strength, I've come to set you free this morning. There is only one way to heaven. It's the blood of the cross. And on that cross, when he shouted, Telestai, paid in full, he was saying, it's done, it's finished, it's done for eternity. There will never need to be another sacrifice again. I've made a way where there was no way. The veil was torn in two, and we get access into the Holy of Holies. This is the gospel. This is the good news. If I could have some bread, I've only got the juice, that would be amazing. Just hold out your bread with me. Ha oh, I feel the Holy Ghost today. Just before we partake, check yourself. If there's unforgiveness in your heart, deal with it right now. We're forgiven much. You are forgiven far more than the offense you have with someone else. Father, forgive us. Forgive us of any unforgiveness. We choose to forgive right now before we partake of communion. Father, we choose in this moment to prepare ourselves. And so, Father, we thank you for your body, broken for us on the cross. We thank you that by his stripes we are healed. We thank you that by his wounds we are made free. We thank you for his body. And we remember Jesus this morning. And so we partake in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. As we take the blood, Jesus, we thank you for the blood shed for us on the cross. The blood that cleanses and washes speaks a better word than that of Abel's. We thank you. Thank you for the blood. We receive it now in Jesus' name. You can partake. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Is the highest your name? Is the greatest your name? Stands above them all. Come on, just stand with me. Oh, throne and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all. And 
Come on, give the Lord a clap in this place. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we can do better than that. Come on, give the Lord some praise. I need this a bit louder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just give your neighbor a hug. Give him a high five as you take your seat. Welcome them to the house. Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Glory to God. I'll keep the keys. Just stay with me for a little bit. Hallelujah. Actually, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I don't need the keys. I still love you, but I don't need you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to preach. Obviously, who knows what today is? Giving Sunday. We are sowing today into what the Lord is about to do in this place. There are new balconies on this side and that side. That wall is coming down. We're building another floor and another kids' room on the top as well as we expand this room. Also, we're believing for this piece of land just over this wall, and um, we're believing for that house. Wouldn't it be amazing if the Lord didn't just expand the building but he gave us both properties as well in Jesus name exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or imagine but as part of this phase one 
our phase one is we're adding the balconies, we're taking the wall down, and we're basically making some more room so those in overflow don't have to sit in the overflow um, anymore. It's a part of that. Uh, but before we take the offering I want to preach this morning, I'm not preaching on money before you all get upset and go, he's going to beat us. I'm going to preach on faith. Why? Because I want you to not just sow, but I want you to sow in faith. I want you not just to give, but I want you to believe with me for what God is about to do through this offering. I've got five people with me. Now, I I need you to get on board with me this morning. Is is everyone alive this morning? Just check your pulse. Just check the person next to you. Just give them a shake. Just say, uh, yeah, yeah. Make sure they're not dead. If anyone's dead, give me a wave. We'll carry them out in Jesus' name. Raise them in the car park and then bring them back again. Shanda Baha. But we're on a mission, not just to see this room full but who knows we need to take territory in Jesus name I believe the more seats that we can give the more God more people God will send to us do you believe that faith everyone say faith Faith. couple of little things I'll do the notices at the end but just to say this uh, with Easter Sunday coming up we're gonna have a Easter choir Yes, and so if you want to be a part of the choir, then the next two Wednesday nights, there'll be a rehearsal. You have to attend both Wednesday nights. Uh, We're going to put it out to a list we've got from our growth track as well. We really want those worshippers to be there. Uh, But come on the Wednesday nights, practice, ready for Easter Sunday. Um, We want you to be a part of that. If you want more details, see Tim, and he can um, give you more details. Tim is giving you a wave. You all just saw him with the guitar. See him after the service. And also, if you've conducted a choir in the past, we want your skills. And so make that known as well, that if you've ever got your, your, your altos and your basses and your tenors, and you get the idea. Ta-da! There you go. Hallelujah. If it's your first time here this morning, give me a wave. Any first time guests here this morning, welcome to the house. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hallelujah. You can get connected if you point your phone at the screen. You can uh, fill out a form. It's just your name and number and we'll connect you in with the house. We'll take you on a journey, um, tell you about our events that are coming up. Uh, and then get you connected onto our growth track course. The next one's coming up 13th of April, where we tell you about the church, the, the beliefs, the vision, find out your gifts, and then get you plugged into the house, into hubs, into uh, serving teams. And so if you want to be a part of that, your first step is fill out the connect card. And so scan that QR code. And so that you can get connected into the life of the church. There is also a paper copy in front of your chair. And so if you want to fill that out, you can do that as well. Amen, amen. Okay, who's ready for the word? Okay, turn with me in your Bibles to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Hebrews 11 verse 1. I'm looking forward to preaching this this morning. I'm going to teach you more than preach, but I'm not promising that I'm not going to get excited. Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In fact, I want us all to say it together. Say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, The evidence of things not seen. Let's say it one more time. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is now. In fact, if we look, keep that on there for me. If we look at it in the Hebrew, uh, in the Greek, sorry, that word now is not there. It just says Faith is. Can I tell you, faith is always a present tense reality. 
Faith is not a past tense. Faith is. It's a now thing. Um, It's the substance. That word is hypostasis. It means a, a stance, hypostasis, a stance. Faith is the substance, a stance. Who knows when you are believing for something, you stand in faith. Faith has a substance. It has a hypostasis. It has a stance which you believe for. Standing in the things you're hoping for. It's a state of being in the Greek. Who knows you have to move in faith. Faith is a muscle in the realm of the spirit. That's what it is. You you, you move in faith. In the realm of faith, there are no limitations. Mm. Faith is able to acquire things in the spirit. It's the currency of the spirit. In fact, faith is the title deed of the thing that you haven't seen yet. Faith possesses in the spirit before it possesses in the natural. Do I have any believers in this place? This word evidence, the evidence of things not seen is the word elankos. It's a reproof and a rebuke. It's winning my case against what I see in the natural. So when you're in faith, you're standing your ground for what you're hoping for. And while you're standing in faith, the Alankos is rebuking the natural evidence that stands in your place in order for what is unseen to become seen. Uh, I don't know if anyone's with me this morning. So how do you get faith? How do you get faith? Anyone want to tell me how they get faith? You're all being very quiet. How do you get faith? Who says the word? If you say the word, put your hands up. Everyone who says the word, put your hands up. Put them up like you you know the answer, like you're right. You're wrong. Completely wrong. Romans 10, 17, this is what it says. It says, faith comes by hearing. Stop there, stop, stop, stop. Faith does not come by the word. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word. Okay, um, I know you are right, okay. But can I tell you, it is not enough just to have the word The word will not get you in faith. The word has to get you to hear, and when you hear, then you move in faith. Oh, I wish someone would get this today. I'm going to take you somewhere. I can feel it in my spirit. The more I hear, the more faith I have. So how do I get to hear? What is hearing? Hearing is revelation. Can we establish this today? What you need more than anything is not good teaching. What you need is revelation. That means you can go to a church and they can preach the word, but if you never receive revelation, you are never going to move in faith. But you can come and hear the word preach. You can receive a revelation, and all of a sudden, faith gets locked on the inside of you. Whoa. That's why I'm looking for revelation above everything else. A rhema. A voice, not just the logos, but the logos becoming quickened by the spirit that then becomes revelation. Can I tell you, everyone has a measure of faith. You all have a portion of faith. If you're a believer in this room, there is a measure of faith on the inside of you. In an atmosphere of faith, you can do more than you've ever done before. Faith. An atmosphere of faith that will make you operate at a higher level. Have you ever been in a meeting where the gift of faith has fallen and you've ended up giving more in the offering than you intended to? Anyone ever been there? You got to the car afterwards and you've gone, huh? What did I just do? 
what was that? Faith was in the room, and the Lord wanted you to sow in in that atmosphere. Your natural mind would not be able to move in that realm, but when faith came in the room, suddenly you were operating at a higher level. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want to operate in the faith realm. Mm, my God. But we have to move beyond saving faith. Most Christians operate at saving faith level. They've got faith for salvation, but they've never gone beyond this level of faith to the point where they can access things in the realm of the Spirit. I don't know about you, but I want us in this house not just to be... uh, Christians who come and do our duty on our Sunday, but I need believers who move in the realm of faith. You see, I'm not trying to just give you nice teachings and just go, oh, let's try and build a community here at Wimbledon. I want to emphasize the things that the Spirit of God emphasizes through the Word. And can I tell you, when Jesus walked the earth, one of the things he talked about the most, who knows what it was? It was faith. Faith. If you can understand faith, you can access things beyond yourself. Come on, does anyone want to go deeper in this, in faith? Anyone say, you know what? Actually, this is the key to my breakthrough. The key to my breakthrough is not going to be a seven-step program. The key to my breakthrough is if I can unlock faith on the inside of me, then I can possess everything I need to possess. Wow. So let's talk about saving faith. Ephesians 2 verses 8 through 9 says this. It says, for by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves is the gift of God. So let me, not of works lest anyone should boast. Just come back to the first part for me. Stay on that bit for a moment. Will you come join me on the stage? I, you know, I had to pick on you just because of those shoes. They are amazing <laughs> Especially for my illustration today. Um, Let me just grab a couple more people. I'm going to be deliberate. Will you join me? Come join me. Come join me as well. Come on. Give them a round of applause. Okay. Now, I want you to just come stand here for me. Stand here. And you guys, come down here with me. Come down. Now, my brother's not saved. (laughs) Everyone say, ah. But he's about to get saved. It's an illustration. Okay. (laughs) But here's how it works. In order for salvation to come to him, he has to believe. What is that? Faith. So faith comes out and faith goes to grace and it brings grace to him. Bring, come back with me. Bring, it, bring him all the way back to him for me. Bring him back. Take him all the way back over there and give him salvation. <laughs> we join the angels rejoicing over his soul. Okay, c- come back where you were. You stay here with me. So this is how faith works. Faith does not save Faith does not bring salvation. Faith takes you to grace. That's why it says, it says, for by grace you've been saved through faith. So the purpose of faith is not to save me. I'm not saved by faith. We get this wrong. Often people say, no, I'm saved by faith. No, you're saved by grace. But the channel to get it is faith. Okay, are you catching what I'm saying? Now, this is powerful because most of you know this when it comes to salvation, but I'm about to just take this to a whole nother level. You see, hope 
is the goal setter, but faith is the goal getter. What do I mean? So my brother here is sick. He's not, but okay. In fact, he's got a leg that just won't work. Just show him your leg that don't work for the illustration. There we go. Okay. Now, he's going to believe for healing. How does he get his healing? For a start, he gets it by revelation. How does he get the revelation by the word? He reads the word, Jehovah Rapha, the Lord is my healer. By his stripes, I am healed. And that word does not become words on a page, but that word then becomes revelation. And suddenly he knows that actually God is a healer. Now, when he steps into revelation, his next step is to what? Believe. So what happens now in the realm of the spirit is faith goes to get healing. And it brings healing back to our brother. Come back again. In fact, I want you just to go sit down for me for a moment. Go back to your seat. You, you stay here, Faith. Now, are you catching this? So your faith does not heal you. You are not healed by faith. Jesus is the healer. But faith goes and gets your healing for you. Who needs a financial breakthrough? Who wants a financial breakthrough? So here's what we do. Hypostasis. We stand believing. Faith, go get my financial breakthrough. He's over there. You stay right where you are. Do not move. Faith, go get him for me. What's that? Yeah, is that, I want, uh, that's my money. Go get my money, Faith. <laughs> Go fetch my money. Come on, Faith. Come on, Faith. Now, here's what I do. Hypostasis. What am I doing? I am standing in faith, believing that faith has going to get my breakthrough. Come on, money. Come on, money. Come on, money. Here's my balconies. Here's the walls coming down. Here's our financial breakthrough. Why? Because faith has gone to get it. Come on, give them a round of applause. You can grab your seats, guys. So faith is the channel. Faith is the funnel. Faith is the transport. Faith is the link between the physical and the spiritual. Faith is the cord between the unseen. Hope sets the goal. Faith gets it. Ooh. I need some people to get some faith in the room. I need some people to start seeing some things that aren't. And believing for them to change right now in Jesus' name. Are you with me? Hope sets the goal, faith gets it. In fact, Hebrews 10, 38 says, the just shall live by faith. Believers should be so dependent upon faith in the same way we eat and drink. Faith is a way of life, not a one-off vent. As believers, everything we do, we should be doing in faith. Our whole lives should be an adventure of believing and obtaining in the realm of the spirit and bringing it to the earth. Can I tell you, this is not for the complacent. This is not for the lukewarm. This is not for those who want religion. If that's you, you're just going to have to endure the next half an hour. This is for some people who want to access realms in the spirit and pull things down. Can I tell you, some of you, you're going to move in a level you've not moved before because limitations are about to break off you my God you see I'm not the healer he is the healer but my faith gives me access oh I feel Holy Ghost Abraham showed his faith 
with Isaac on the mountain. Why? Because faith always produces actions. That's what James says. He said, I'll show you my faith by what I do. Why? You see, when I'm believing and I'm moving in faith, it will always produce something. Your faith is shown by what you do. Revelation gives you access, but faith lets you obtain. So how do I get financial breakthrough? I get revelation. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord is my provision. The Lord wants to bless me. Deuteronomy 28, blessings are mine. But faith, to access that, what does it look like as an action? Sowing. If you're not in faith, you're not going to sow. But when you are in faith and you understand the revelation of what is yours to access, you begin to sow seed. I can tell you if you're in faith for finances, whether you sow or not. I'm preaching better than you're helping me right now. Now, some of you have got faith in certain areas, but not faith in other areas. Why? Because you don't have revelation. You have a revelation that he's your healer. Some of you, you can lay hands and the sick are going to get healed. But when it comes to finances, there's no revelation. And so there's no faith to go with it. This is why the Bible says, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. Actually, when you begin to know, and not just know the words, but you know on the inside of you, you begin to access these things in the realm of the Spirit. If we wanted to see more healing take place in this church, I could preach a message on healing. What am I doing? I'm taking the Word, but preaching it to give you revelation so that your revelation then enables you to access what is available for you in Christ. But how do you get that through faith? You send faith to go get it for you. But what does the action look like? Can I give you the biblical action for healing? Call for the elders and have them lay hands. Lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You want to know whether you believe in healing or not? You believe in healing if when you're sick, you get hands laid on your head. You can say, I need a healing all you like, but if no one ever prays for you, you are not operating in the New Testament biblical model for receiving healing. Oh, I wish someone would help me. I'm going to, I'm just. (laughs) Salvation, confess with your mouth. What's that? That's faith in action. Not only has my faith been sent, but now I'm showing it by my confession. Water baptism, that's proof of my faith that's brought salvation. An action that complements my faith. Faith is the channel to obtain every promise in the word. But faith only comes if the Logos becomes rhema. Now, Jesus said this. Can we go deeper? Have you got that? Have I laid a good foundation? Okay, great faith. Matthew 8, verses 8 through 10, it says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you would come under my roof, but speak a word and my servant will be healed. For I am also a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. I don't know about you, but I want to operate in great faith. Uh, Does anyone say yes to that this morning? Great faith. And Centurion says, you don't even need to come to my house. Just say the word. Next time we see great faith is in Matthew 15, 22. It says this, And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. He ignores her. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of Israel. And she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And Jesus answered her and said to her, oh, woman, 
great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Great faith. Everyone say great faith. So you've got the centurion who says, just say the word. And then you've got this woman who refuses to take no for an answer. Can, can, I, can I give you a definition of, of how you obtain great faith? Great faith is obtained when you refuse to let any barriers hold you back from your blessing. Yeah. You, you, this is the thing. When you look in the natural, you are not going to move in great faith. When you look with your eyes at the circumstances, you are not going to move in great faith. He could have said, Bo, you're not at my house. He said, I don't care about the barrier of location. You just say the word and it's going to happen. She didn't look at who she was as a person. She just says, I don't care about that. I know you can do it. And according to your faith, so be it. Whoa. Some of you are too professional. You know too much about certain areas that it becomes a limitation for you to move in great faith. My God. Some of you have learned too much on Google. You've Googled all of the symptoms. You've listened to all of the doctor's reports. And you're choosing to believe what the doctors said. Well, I've got news for you. Jesus can heal every sickness and every disease. There is no disease that he cannot heal. Break the limitations of your belief. People said, well, you'll never see a revival church in London. I break that limitation in Jesus' name. People said, Europe is dead. I break that limitation in Jesus' name. They said, you won't be able to build a church of a thousand people. I break that limitation in Jesus' name. Great faith. In fact, your traditions can limit your faith. That's what it says, Mark 7, 13. Making the word of God of no effect through your tradition which you have handed down. What does that mean? It means you've been around stuff so much that actually what you have seen, your traditions, are now greater than your faith in the word. Yeah, but we don't see those things anymore. No, I don't care whether we see those things anymore. If the word of God says I can have it. I can have it in Jesus' name. Your traditions do not limit me. Are you with me today? Break the limitations. Mark 9, 23, Jesus said, If you can believe, whoa, all things, everyone say all things. All things are possible to him who believes. If you need a miracle, give me a wave today. You're going to get your miracle. You just need to send faith out for a walk today. Send faith out with his bright, luminous green trainers in Jesus' name. Go get our miracles. What about little faith? Little faith is a negative thing. But small faith is encouraged. Can I unpack that thought for you? A little faith. Small can grow, but little is a rebuke. Matthew 8, 26 through 27. But he said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and sea, and there was a great calm. Why was their faith little and their other people's great? Their faith was little because they were more concerned by their circumstances than by what he could do. They limited their faith based on what they could see with their eyes. I'm preaching far better than this church is helping me. Oh. Matthew 14, 31 says this. I don't know if we've got, there we go. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said, oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? 
And so we see little faith, which is limited, and great faith, which breaks past the barriers. But Jesus said this about small faith. Everyone say small faith. faith. Matthew 17, verse 20. And so Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for assuredly I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, Move from here, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Mark 11 says it better. Mark 11, 22 through 23. And so Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, Be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things will be done, He will have whatever he says. I I need us to catch this before we move on. Who gets who who gets what 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 whoever believes gets these things he says it will be done. And he will he will have, he'll possess whatever he says. Who who wants to possess? Who who wants their hope? Who wants their hope to become reality? Yeah, you want that. He who prays. He who fasts, he who says. You see, faith speaks. Oh. You can tell if someone is in faith by what comes out of their mouth. Faith is not, you don't possess things by faith through prayer. Prayer is important. Trust me, we need to pray. If you pray and believe, that's a whole different realm. And it is an element of faith. Yes, prayer possesses. Yes, fasting brings the breakthrough. But we're talking about faith. Faith has a language. Faith calls things that are not as though they are. Oh, I need some of you to just hold, hold tight with me. And so he says there's a small faith that you can take to great faith. Why? Because you can grow your faith. There's an ability to grow faith. Let me prove it to you. Jude 1 verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, guess what you are doing? You are exercising your spiritual muscle. I believe it's one of the greatest things you can do. This is not just a little flame you got to show you got the baptism in the spirit. This is not something you do just to show that you're a spirit-filled believer. This is something that if you'll do every day, hours, two hours, every Sunday, three hours, four hours before you come, you will begin to operate at a level that you've not operated at before. Whoa. Grow your faith. This is how 2 Thessalonians 1 put it. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it's fitting, because your faith grows exceedingly, and the love of every one of you all abounds to each other. He says to those Thessalonians, he says, your faith is growing exceedingly. And how did he say it was growing? He said, because they were enduring persecution, and later he says, because of their giving. He could determine their level of faith based on their level of giving. We won't go there. (laughs) Grow your faith. Tell the person next to you, grow your faith. What about strong faith? Romans 4, 17 says this. It says, it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him who believed, God who gives life to the dead And calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Calls those things that are not as though they were. Faith speaks. When it's not even happening yet, faith begins to speak. You want to know if you're standing in faith. What is your confession? What is coming out of your mouth? That's why I look at these balconies and I say, they are already paid in full in Jesus' name. That's why I look at what God's about to do. You are not my source. I've already sent faith out to go get the money in Jesus' name. (laughs) 
Patience isn't acceptance. I, I, I need you to get this. You are not standing in faith when you have accepted your circumstance. Do not mistake patience for acceptance. You see, Abraham was 100 years old, but he was still believing God that his promises would come to pass in his life. He had not accepted, well, I just can't have children. He was still standing, believing, waiting for faith to obtain the promise that was in his life. Some of you have accepted situations that I've come to provoke you again today to say, stop accepting and start standing. My God. Verse 18. Who contrary to hope in hope believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken. So shall your descendants be. That was the revelation. And not being weak in faith, if I can have the scripture, please. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead. Since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith. Giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 23 puts it this way. It says, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Not just salvation, but the substance of things hopeful. Hold fast to your confession. If you hang around me, you know I have an allergy. Anyone know I have an allergy? If not, you're about to know I have an allergy. Do you want to know what I'm allergic to? I am allergic to negativity. I break out in the shakes. I'll be honest with you today, I am not very pastoral. Don't come and tell me your grumbles and complaints. Why? Because we need to be those who move in faith. I just, sometimes I just go, right, let's forget about that. Let's just start changing our language. Why? Because faith speaks. Uh, even when things aren't good, I just say they are great in Jesus' name. This, is, this place is on fire. This is the most encouraging church I've ever met in my whole life. They, they celebrate every time I preach in Jesus' name. Molly. Speak faith as if you already have it. I am healed. I'm walking in my healing. This ear, it's a long trek to get my healing, but faith is gone to get it, and I'm going to hear again in Jesus' name. I don't know what you need, but send faith out for a walk today. You, you, you stop accepting your circumstances and start standing again. Start moving in a different realm of faith. Romans 14, weak faith. Receive one who is weak in the faith. But not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak only eats vegetables. I'm not saying vegans are weak in their faith. But I read the Bible. Oh, Jesus. All the vegans forgive me in Jesus' name. Okay. But if you're limiting God's ability to be able to save you based on what you do, your faith is weak. In fact, the same is true with all of these areas. It comes back to what is limiting your faith. 
We, we don't move with the carnal man. The carnal man wants to work things out. We don't work it out. We just believe what the Bible says and we stand, send our faith and we wait for it to come in. Something worse than weak faith, no faith. Mark chapter 4, I'm nearly done. And then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Uh, I'm trying to get us somewhere today. I, I, I don't know where you're at personally. Some of you, this may be a convicting message. There's no faith. You're, you're, you're under your circumstances in depression. I, I don't care whether you've got small faith. Just find some faith today. If you can find even a measure of faith today, then you can grow that thing to great faith. Fear is the devil's faith. Fear can be as creative as faith. Who, who knows that? Your fear has an ability. Fear works exactly the same way as faith. That when you send out your fear, it's a conduit to go and take hold of what you don't want to happen. Oh, I wish I could spend more time. You ever found that some people, what they feared the most happened to them why? Because they'd sent fear out to go and possess it. Mm. You know the 12 spies were all correct. Every one of the 12 spies was right. 10 said, we can't do it. And you know what? They didn't do it. Two said, we can do this. And you know what? They did it. According to your faith, so will it be. Ten of them, no, we can't do it. They did and two did it and they did it. They did it, did it. <laughs> this is what's going to happen. Some of you are eating the fruit of what you were believing for five years ago. What we are experiencing in this church is, is not just the fruit of the last two years. I want to tell you, I've been standing and believing for these days for 25 years. And, and I need some people who will stand and believe with me for the next 25 years. God's not finished with us yet. And we're believing that this city will be shaken for Jesus. We're believing that this nation will be one for Jesus. Corinthians 4.13 says this, it says, and since we have the same spirit of faith according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore, are you catching this? If you believe, you speak. If, if you're believing for something, but your words do not line up with what you're believing for, I need to be very clear with you. You of little faith. You are limiting what God can do by your own confession. Ah. Oh. If I was nimble, I would jump down, amen myself, and get back on this stage. I, I, I need someone to find faith. This is why I do what I do when I speak over you. This is why when I prophesy, I say, and I prophesy that your best days are ahead of you. I prophesy you're going to be the head and not the tail. What am I doing? I am speaking faith over your lives. I don't know, I, 
I don't want to be somewhere where it's like, oh, the economy's going to be terrible. I don't know what we're all going to do. We'll all die of COVID at this rate. Who knows? No, we want to be a part of a community of faith, a community that says, I don't live by the world's economy. I am of a different kingdom and a different economy in Jesus' name. My faith is not based on what I earn for provision. My provision comes from my Father in heaven. That means I can sow it, I can give it, and guess what? My God's going to give it back to me, pressed down, shaking together, running over in Jesus' name. I don't look to the doctors. Yes, the doctors may be able to help me, but I look to Jesus, the healer. I look to Jehovah Rapha, and I speak healing to everybody in this room in Jesus' name. Faith. Let me give you one more scripture and then we're going to take our offering. Proverbs 18, verse 20. Actually, I'm going to give you two more scriptures. Proverbs 18 says this. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Let me give you two angles on this, and you can believe whichever one you want, but I think both are relevant. Yes, your faith speaks, and it has the ability to bring provision into your life. But can I tell you, your faith also builds your inner man. I believe when it's talking about The stomach is talking not just of your belly and food. It's talking about your innermost being. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Your spirit dwells in your stomach, in this inner man. And it says when you speak, your spirit is being fed. Sometimes you've got to start speaking it. Until your spirit starts believing it. Oh. Verse 21 puts it this way. The verse after that, it says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. What are you speaking? What are you speaking over your kids? My kids are going to be the most blessed kids you've ever seen in Jesus' name. (laughs) They're they're going to possess the gates of their enemies. They are going to walk in wealth like they've never known. They're going to be successful. They're going to have many children that are going to be successful in Jesus' name. Even if your kid's naughty, my kid is such a good kid in Jesus' name. (laughs) Shandabori. What am I doing? Speaking faith. Okay. Let me give you one final scripture. Have you got something from this? I want to give you the scripture, what I believe the Lord's told me for this offering and for these next few months. Rubashandi. Thank you, Lord. Kuda Bahala Masia Maha. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, just pray in the spirit. I need to find the verse. As you can see, I'm following the Holy Ghost and not... Kura Bahala Masia Baha. 
Kuda Bahala Masia Bahala Masuto Kuda Baha Kuda Bahala Masia Bahala Masuto Kuda Maha Kuda Bahala Masia Mahala Masuto Kuda Ma Yahala Masuto Kuda Mahala Masia Mahala Masuto Kuda Ma Yaha Mahala Masia Bahala Masuto Kuda Baha Yahala Masia Bahala Masuto Kuda Ma Thank you Lord uh, 2 Chronicles 31 And we're going to read from verse 4 through 10. 2 Chronicles 31, 4 through 10. Moreover, he commanded the people who dwelt in Jerusalem to contribute support for the priests and the Levites that they might devote themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the commandment was circulated, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain and wine, oil and honey, and of the produce of the field, and they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. Stay there for one moment. Go back to that one. Stay there for a moment. If God gives you 100,000, who's going to give him 10,000? Amen. 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 Let me try again. Okay, maybe I need to help you a little bit. Next week, if God gives you 100,000, who's going to give him 10,000? If God gives you 200,000, who's going to give him 20,000? If God gives you 500,000, who's going to give him 50,000? The Holy Spirit is watching right now. He's, he is deciding who he's going to distribute wealth to right now in this moment. In fact, can we just be really real? 10% is just the bottom line. If God gives you a million, who's going to give him 500,000? Who's, who, who? 10 million? Do your deal right now with the Holy Ghost. If you give it to me, I'll give you 90%. I'll give you nine. I believe that money is going to flow in this house, and I believe... It's going to flow to you first. But God's looking for those he can distribute wealth to in order to get it into the house. You see, this is paid for. And God will raise someone up to pay for it. Someone who knows that their mission, even over these next three months, is to pay for this balcony. God's going to raise them up so that they become the vessel by which it can be done. Uh, If you don't want it, I'm saying I want it, Lord. If they don't want to give it, I'll give it. Send it my way. 70-30. Shanda. Bo. Verse 6. And the children of Israel and Judah who dwell in the cities of Judah brought the tithe of oxen and sheep, also the tithe of the holy things which were consecrated to the Lord, and there... God, they laid in heaps. Everyone say heaps. Heaps. They piled up all of the blessings. The people were being so blessed that they began to pile up the blessings in heaps. Now you, you, you need to picture what was going on outside the temple. Such was the generosity of the people that there began to be heaps and heaps of blessings that were being brought into the house. Whoa. Verse 7. In the third month, I wish I had some prophetic people in this house. In the third month, what month are we? In the third month, they began to lay up heaps. Can can I tell you, we are laying up heaps. We're about to lay up heaps in this house. The heaps are coming. The heaps are coming. Oh, if someone could believe with me for heaps, I prophesy heaps in Jesus' name. They began laying them in the third month, and they finished in the seventh month. 
Can I tell you what we are starting now? It's going to be finished by July. I wish some people could access their faith with me right now. Paid in full by July. I, 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 I believe in these next four months, God's going to bless you so much. As you become a channel that you can flow, that by July, this will be paid in full in Jesus' name. We prophesy the heaps are coming. The heaps are going to flow through you in abundance in the name of Jesus. Let's look verse 8, and then we're going to pray and receive. And when Hezekiah and the leaders came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. Next one. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the heaps. And Azariah, the chief priest from the house of Zadok, answered him and said, Since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we've had enough to eat and a plenty left. For the Lord has blessed his people. And what is left... Is this great abundance? Are you, do you, are you getting this? This is just the leftovers. What God is about to bring in is just leftovers. His people get blessed. Can you access your faith with me? And so we're going to receive today on this Giving Sunday an offering for this work we're about to do. And you can give using the bank details or you can give using the QR codes. If you want to give a monthly uh, gift, you can do it using uh, the website. You can scan the QR code. If you want to make a pledge today, so if you've got money tied up and you say, you know what, we want to pledge and we want to sow, um, then fill out the form. It will ask you for a date. Now, let me say this. Do not fill this out unless you are seriously going to fulfill it. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. It won't impress me if you say, oh, well, I'm going to give 100,000. And you never give 100,000. There's absolutely no point in doing it. Give a pledge and then fulfill your pledge. Let it be of, but let it be unto God, a commitment unto God to fulfill it. And so you can pledge that way as well or give using um, the QR code. You can also give using the offering baskets if the welcome team can just come and stand at the front for me. And you can also give using the card machine. And so if someone could come with the card machine as well, just come now, come before I pray um, as we get ready. To so ask the Holy Spirit, what is my faith seed? Where am I sending my faith? Put name, name your seed. We heard that the other week. Put put something on your seed. Send it out. Believe for God to do something. Let your faith be activated as we pray um, over this offering today. And so, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this atmosphere of faith today. And Lord, I pray right now for the heaps to come in from now to July. We pray for an abundance to begin to build in this house. We thank you that these balconies are paid in full. We thank you the expansion is paid in full. But God, I pray more than anything that every single person who sows in this offering today, God, I pray you bless them with more, that they continue to give more, that we can continue to build your kingdom here upon this earth, that we could possess land and territory in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you move on your people in such a way that the heaps would come to them that they can come into this house. God, I pray that it would not be a figurative of speech when we say a hundred thousand, a million, but God, I pray that there would be such an open heaven over your people to get your work done here in this house. God, I pray such an open heaven over your people, promotions increase. I pray that money would just be coming from all angles and that they would know it's only because of you and because of the work you want to be done here 
here in this house. And so, God, we pray uh, that this offering today would not be a duty offering, but, God, we activate our faith to sow into kingdom purposes today, believing for a mighty harvest in return. We sow today in faith, knowing that together, corporately, we can accomplish the work you've set out for us to accomplish. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. 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 You can come and give. If you gave online, you can come and tap your phone. If you pledge, you can tap your phone. If not, there's still time to do that as well. If I can have some keys, and if you, if you want to give by card, then see Mama P. She's got the card machine there as well. Or if someone wants to do that for her, that would be amazing. Kura mahala masia mahala masia mahala masoto kura maha Rava shande ki mande si manda hala basoto kura maha yahala masia mahala masoto kura ma 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 kura mahala masia mahala masoto kura ma yahala masia bahala masoto kura ma yeah just give me some kids thanks kura bahala masia bahala masoto kura ma Kura bahala masia bahala masuto kura maha. Kura bahala masia bahala masia maha. Kura bashande mile silma silmende. Kimando ro ro shiro maha. Sia mahala masia bahala makura baye. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise you, my God. Kura mahala masia mahala masoto kura maha. Kura mahala masia maha. Shande kimando romondo simende. Kimanda silamendi raba. Kura bahala masoto kura maha. Yahala masia mahala masoto kura maha. Kura mahala masia mahala masoto kura maha. Kura mahala masoto kura bahala masia baye. Kia mahala masura mahala masoto kura maha. Shandebe kimando romondo simende kimandaha. Hallelujah. As they finish, I want you just to stand with me. And I want you all just to turn and face this wall. Keep playing for me, please, Terence. Just face this wall. And I want you just to reach out a hand to the balcony. And I want you just to say, paid in full. Say it again. Now I want you to turn the other direction. Reach out. This is a prophetic act. Reach out your hand. Say it again. Paid in full. Paid in full. Let's do one more. Reach out to this piece of land just behind this building. Paid in full. Paid in full. Can we give the Lord a clap? Can we thank him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Jesus died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, and rose again from the dead three days later. And the Bible says if you'll turn from your sins and you'll turn to him, you can be born again. And you just need to believe. You've heard it today. Faith is all you need. And you're here and you say, Pastor John, I want you to pray for me. I need Jesus to forgive me. Then just give me a wave. Is there anyone here today? Thank you, sister. 
Anyone else, you'll say yes to Jesus today. Anyone else? I'm going to ask you to be really bold. Will you come forward for me? Yeah, come on, give her a round of applause as she comes. Hallelujah. Welcome. Welcome to the kingdom. Is there anyone else today? I'll give you a moment longer. You say yes to Jesus. You need Jesus to forgive your sins. Hallelujah. Everyone say this with me. Say, Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Today, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I turn from sin and I turn to you. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give her a round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you guys asking Jesus into your life as well? Come on, welcome to the kingdom. Come on, come on, give them a round of applause. Father, we pray right now that you fill their lives, touch them with the Holy Spirit. Let them never be the same again. From this day forward, let life invade them. Lift their spirits, Father, show them the intimacy of knowing you and walking with you. Let it be the start of an incredible journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord one more hand in this place. Now, I don't know if you guys want to today or if there's anyone else in this room, but if you want to be baptized today, give me a wave. Is there anyone that wants to be baptized? Uh, we'll, we'll baptize you. We've got a change of clothes if you want that. And so if there's anyone that wants to be baptized, I know we're doing baptisms tonight. Uh, we'll be doing baptisms again next week, so there's no rush. But if you've not been baptized, you want to be baptized, we'll do that today. I'll give a moment longer in case there's anyone. If my team know of anyone, give me a wave. If not, then I think we will, we will carry on. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, be baptized. Don't wait. You don't need to be perfect. It's when you, you said yes to Jesus, you are good enough to get in that tank. That's how you get washed and cleansed. And so don't wait too long. Maybe next week we'll get you in that tank. Two people want to get baptized? Come on, come on. Come on, just come, come, come. Hallelujah. Worship team, if you'll come, we'll just get ready for it and then. Okay. Um, you can still give by card. I know a couple of people weren't able to. That's now resolved if you want to see them. We'll just get ready and we'll baptize. Let's sing a song as we do that.
Hallelujah. What's your name? Sharif, Sharif. And do you turn from your sins? Yes. And do you ask Jesus into your life? Yeah. Why do you want to be baptized? Because I'm tired of sinning, man. <laughs> You're ready for them sins to be washed away, yeah? Come on. Then we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. What's your name? Shaquille. Shaquille. And do you turn from your sin? Yes, I do. And do you ask Jesus into your life? Yes, I do. Why do you want to be baptized? I'm ready to give my life to Christ. You're ready to give your life to Christ. Come on. Shaquille, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. If there's anyone else today, you say, you know what, I need to get baptized as well. There's still time. We've got a change of clothes. If there's anyone else, you say, yeah, I need to do this. Maybe your heart is pounding. You're like, don't put it off. We'll do it today. I'll wait here all day for you. Is there anyone else? If not, I'm going to release you. I'll give you five more seconds. This is the activation of your faith. Anyone else? Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Everyone reach out a hand. And may the outrageous grace of the Father, the outrageous love of the Father, the extravagant grace of Master Jesus, and the intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Your best days are ahead of you. God's not finished with you yet. You're going to possess everything you need to possess because you are going to be a person of great faith. And the enemy will bow and the kingdom of God will advance because you're moving in faith. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Come on, give the Lord one more clap. We love you. We're back again tonight. Pastor Keith is here, 6 o'clock, with myself. And then next Sunday, Trevor Baker in the morning. You don't want to miss out on that. We'll see you then. Thank you.